entrances on stages and events like this for the last nine months. I have entered from a float plane in Alaska. I have entered from a buckboard and a stagecoach. But today will be a day that will live in my mind forever. Today, I entered from one of your unique outhouses right behind me. And as I exited, a gentleman ran up to me and said, you better answer this question first, Mr. Payne, and then ran off. So, in duty to that demand, Mr. Payne, you were born in Thetford, England, yet you have a decided East Coast accent on your YouTube videos. How come? Signed, the Seattle Brigade. My dear Seattle Brigade, strange things happen to your vocal cords when you've been in a grave for 230 years. Today is a good day. Today is a great day. You are opening a new chapter, Olympia, Washington, in the life of our country. It is a great day. And it is my unshakable belief that the very moment a people stand up and shout in one voice, enough is enough, the world changes and those people become invincible. The opportunity to change the course of history comes to very few. But I suggest that time is here and now. And let the word go across our troubled land. From this time forward, there are only two kinds of Americans. Those who choose to do nothing at the most critical time in the history of this nation. The type of American who moans and complains and says you can't fight City Hall. Then there are people like you today, Olympia, Washington, who are changing the world, who are changing America, because you know we are City Hall. Good afternoon, my dear friends. I am honored to be at an event where all the best looking people in the great Northwest decided to show up at the same place at the same time. Thank you so much. And let me assure you, you are not alone. I have been crisscrossing this nation for the last nine months in the grit and grime of 42nd Street and Broadway in New York, from an ice flow in Alaska, from the banks of the river of the Ohio, and in amphitheaters and ballparks along the Arkansas River. And I can tell you, my dear friends, you are part of the greatest grassroots movement in the history of this country. Two million plus, two million plus of your brothers and sisters from Sacramento, California, to Missoula, Montana, to Corpus Christi, to Bangor, Maine, to Fort Lauderdale, 90% of whom never carried a protest flag. 90% of whom only saw their patriotism as voting every four years and paying their taxes. But like you, they have looked into their children's eyes and their grandchildren and asked themselves a question. Do I want to hand over this America today to those children? And their response has been a resounding no. And thank God for that no. You are doing, you are doing, my dear friends, what this nation has not done since December 7th, 1941. You are rising above politics. You are rising above race. You are rising above labels, right wing, left wing, or no wing. And you're uniting as Americans to restore common sense and reason to our nation. Now many of your fellow Americans are not here today. I have a very personal note for them. Two days ago, at two o'clock in the morning, I received a call from one of your own. Master Sergeant, 
John McDonald of the Marine Corps on the front lines of Iraq from Washington, your state, and said to me at two o'clock in the morning, for those Americans who are not here, Mr. Payne, tell the American people we are fighting the enemy without. It's time for them to stand up and fight the enemy within who would destroy our country. Tell them, Mr. Payne, tell them, Mr. Payne, now is the time to be afraid of what will happen if we don't speak up. Semper Fi, Semper Fi to Master Sergeant John McDonald. And may God bless you, sir, and return you home and your men safe and sound to deliver that message in person to your fellow state citizens. The fools, the fools will no longer dictate to the wise. History will record on this great date, in this place, political correctness is dead and its soul has gone to hell where it belongs. To those fellow Americans who have been paralyzed by the putrid fraud that calls itself political correctness, afraid to speak out, lest you be labeled a bigot, a racist, or a Nazi nationalist, remember the words of Master Sergeant John McDonnell. Be afraid of what will happen to your country if you don't speak out now. Are you ready, Washington? Are you ready to take back your country? Are the, are the windows of the state capitol open? Can you see anyone? Can you determine that? Because I have a very special greeting to every elected official in the country who refuses to listen to the will of the majority and to every activist judge who ignores the spirit of our laws and is rewriting our history, erasing our traditions and our values and to a federal government who has shamefully and criminally plunged America from the number one creditor nation to the number one debtor nation on planet Earth. That same government who called one million law-breaking illegal aliens marching in your neighborhoods under a foreign flag demanding more of the taxpayers' dollars. That was called a civil liberties protest. But on April 15th of this year, Woo! that same government, that same cheerleading press corps called one million legal citizens marching in tea parties protesting unfair taxation as a bunch of right-wing extremists. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I respectfully, I respectfully suggest the question is not whether you will be extremists, but what kind of extremists will you be? The nation and the world are in dire need of creative extremists. I did not say that. Martin Luther King said that. He also said, he also said, the hottest place in hell is reserved for those who remain neutral in times of great moral conflict. By that definition, you have assured yourself a very high place in heaven. <laughs> to those elected officials, to that government, to those activist judges, I say in this place, put your ears to the ground. Listen, there is a terrifying rumble growing louder and louder throughout this land, beating an unmistakable tattoo, announcing your days are numbered. <laughs> It is a positive force, a positive force no power on earth can stop. The long sleep is over, my dear friends. A giant is awakening in America. That giant is here today in Heritage Park.
And that giant's name is We the People, Silent No More. The great state of Washington, whose people talk straight, mean what they say. And when they hear a politician say, oops, I misspoke, they know he or she is lying through their teeth. Yes, yes. I read an article in your Olympian newspaper this morning, many of you probably read the same article, that stated a recent survey indicates 80% of all politicians in the state of Washington were bottle-fed as babies. <laughs> just goes to show you, my dear friends, even their own mothers couldn't trust them. <laughs> but I digress. The state of Washington knows instinctively not to be misguided into thinking the financial crisis is the issue. It is not. It is the wake-up call. Perhaps our last. The economy will come back, albeit greatly diminished forcing all of you to do more with less and to teach your children they are entitled to nothing they don't earn. Amen. But the greater catastrophe, the greater catastrophe facing all of us, this nation is approaching the dark shadow of Armageddon with a vicious cancer that is reversing every founding principle we have fought for replacing government, self-government, with government of the government, yeah. by the government, and for the government. That cancer's name is socialism. Yes. And the enemy within, the enemy within, are disguising the end of our democracy under the politically correct banners of globalism and progress. Don't be fooled, America. Failure by any other name is still failure. The issue in doubt for all of us is much greater than a broken financial system. For what doth it profit a nation if it regain its economy and suffer the loss of its soul? The character of a nation is determined not by what it has gained, but by what it has lost. How much more proof do you mean, America? How much more proof to those Americans who are not here today, who are not at rallies like this, who are not signing up to make a difference? How much more proof do you need? On every single issue of our time, your non-representing representatives have ignored you. You have lost the heart and soul of your country. You have lost your representative democracy. Your servants have become your masters. Are you going to stand for that? No. Somehow I thought that would be your answer. The state of Washington knows that when 100 senators and 435 representatives forget who their real employers are and refuse to read the largest spending bill in history, it's time to downsize their arrogance, hand out the pink slips, and restore the wisdom of our Constitution. The state of Washington knows that every man, woman, and child in this audience and watching us around the country on television now pays more for being governed than for food, clothing, and shelter combined. Your founding fathers are turning over in their graves. The condition that distinguishes a free man from a slave is dominance over himself and the fruits of his labor. By that definition, my dear friends, the American taxpayer has officially become a ward of the government. This year alone, every man, woman, and child in this audience will pay 12% more on their taxes. That revenue from the 12% won't even begin to pay the interest on the government loans that have mortgaged your children's future and five generations of your children's future. Washington, a state that realizes when taxation 
with representation becomes more oppressive than taxation without representation, it's time to surrender or fight. Surrender or fight. Which do you choose, Washington? Fight. Well, our Declaration of Independence agrees with you. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people, the right of the people to alter or abolish it, your Declaration of Independence. Are you ready now to take back your country and restore common sense to our national character? Are you ready? Then please shout out your answers to these questions and qualify as to whether or not we are ready for the second American Revolution. Do you believe that when a government or anyone does for you what you should be doing for yourself, you lose your freedom. Yeah. Do you believe it's time to do away with all the divisive hyphens that separate us? Yeah. White hyphen America, black hyphen America, Hispanic hyphen America, gay and lesbian hyphen America. What's next? Part Italian, half Jewish, one-fifth Ukrainian on my mother's side, semi-Catholic, sometimes redneck, hyphen America. You want unity and pride in country? Then stop identifying yourselves by the color of your skin and by your race. You are hyphenating yourself to death. Isn't it time for all of us just to be proud to be Americans. Yeah. Do you agree yeah. with President? Do you agree with President John Adams? You agree with President Adams, who said, "Our Constitution was made only for a moral and God-fearing people. It is wholly inadequate for any other, and that means no judge." No legislator, no non-believer has the right to rewrite our history. Do you believe we are still one nation under God? Yeah. And let the second American Revolution begin. It was a custom. It was a custom during the Revolutionary War when an American ship was creeping up behind a French frigate for all the Americans to get on deck and to shout a saying shout a sentence that would send the fear of the Almighty into the heart of the British who were about to go to the bottom. Join us, my dear friends, now in sending that message in a semi-humorous way. All of, the, all of you who are seated, would you all please stand and face what you affectionately call the asylum on the hill. Your state capital, if you would, face that area. You are now facing southeast, 2,604 miles straight ahead, is a ship of state whose crew is doing to you what the British did to my generation. You are facing the highest paid, reading impaired, none representing representatives in the world, the United States Congress. On the count of three, if you agree, would you please shout these words with as much gusto as you are capable of. I'm mad as hell and I'm taking my country back. One, two, three, go. They didn't hear you in Seattle. One more time. One, two, three, hit it. I think they heard you in Barcelona that time. Sit down, enjoy yourself for a moment. The only real question now, friends, and we're all aware of it. What are we, the people, going to do about it? Principles, not policies. Principles, not politics. Rise above politics and return the national debate to the founding principles of our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. Don't politicize this movement. 
This is a grassroots movement. Once you politicize it, you're turning yourself off to the 80% of Americans who constitute the real power of this country, the people in the middle, afraid to do what you're doing. Get up out of their lazy boy recliners, put down their TV clickers, and do something. Act to save their country. Now, you want those people as part of what you're doing. As soon as you label whatever movement it is, Republican, Democrat, right wing, left wing, or wingless, you have completely eliminated the possibility of bringing those people underneath a movement that speaks for American issues, not political issues. When you debate amnesty for 20 million illegals, debate on the principle. We are either a nation of laws or we are not. And we do not reward lawbreakers. When you debate when you debate bailing out failure and taxing success to pay for it, debate on the founding principle of an economy free from government control. Sit down, dear friends, and simply define your principles and stick to them. If you can raise the national debate above the divisive politics, that's the swamp, that's the cesspool that has got you where you are now, broke and divided. We have to rise above that. And you have to immediately say to these people, what is your principle? Raise the national debate to one of principle. Ask these people, sir or madam, what is your principle for sending our sons and daughters to fight for nations who refuse to fight for themselves? What is your principle that allows you to ignore the overwhelming voice of the majority on every single issue of our time. What is your principle on allowing certain ethnicities and races to be labeled privileged and given rights and subsidies denied to others? All men are created equal and no American is more equal than any other American. Then go to your school boards. Go to your neighborhood school boards and ask, what is your principle that motivates you to teach our children every other nation's history and sensitivity, but fail to teach American history, American founding principles? Yes. My dear friends, seize this moment. The worst of times are the best of times. They're the only times that Americans pulled together. 9-11, Pearl Harbor, we rose above politics and we came together. But there are no bombs falling on your city. There's no great enemy army at your gate to see. But we are all facing a calamity five times greater than every calamity that has preceded us in American history. We're losing our country. We're losing our values because those 80% in the middle continue to sit on their rear ends and not get up and act the way you are acting right now. Now, now, my dear friends, the final test of your resolve. What if all this fails and the time for talk is over? Then I suggest you must choose the harder right over the easier wrong. You must choose the civil disobedience that never fails. Your last peaceful resort is to shock the self-serving corrupt political system with operation. We the people shock and awe. It will be time to shut down what's not working. It will be time to shut down the United States government with a national tax revolt, with millions, millions of Americans refusing to pay their taxes until... It's our government, it's our country. Americans refusing to pay their taxes until the government answers to we the people, the non-political questions, the American questions and force them to do what they require you to do. Balance the budget. Without it, my dear friends, without it, nothing will change. Nothing. Every other issue is central to that. If we, the people, cannot force them to do the obvious economically, 
then the mortgaging of our grandchildren for five generations will continue and America will be more greatly diminished. It is bigger than any other issue if we look at it in terms of common sense. Force them to listen to we the people and abolish a tax code seven times longer than the Bible and understandable to no one. Right. Demand a new simple fair tax with every able-bodied American contributing their fair share with no free riders on that bus. Yes. And when they start listening to we the people in Washington, don't ask, demand, term limits to do away with the scourge and stench of career politicians. Infuse our system with new ideas, with new blood. Don't ask. Demand of them what the Constitution demands. Enforce our immigration laws now. Tell them, please, Mr. and Miss Congressman, point out in the Constitution of the United States where it says the American taxpayer every year must hand over $55.5 billion a year to illegal aliens who demand free access to our soon to be bankrupt Medicare and other programs. $55.5 million out of your pocket. Where does it say that in the Constitution of the United States? Ask them that question and ask, ask, don't demand. We repair our broken common bond and declare English as the official language of the United States of America. This isn't about immigrant bashing. This isn't about being an extreme right winger or a bigot. It's the most humanitarian thing we can do. The same thing we did to our grandmothers and grandfathers who came here legally and respected the United States of America's rule of law and asked for nothing in return but opportunity. In their memory and with charity, but justice first. Aristotle said that nation which gives charity before justice is a doomed nation. Yes. We do it as humanitarians to strengthen our common bond. Lest we forget, my dear friends, it was not the politician, not the speaker, not the poet, the philosopher, the teacher or the preacher who secured our freedom and continues to put his and her life on the lines for us. Would you all please stand now and give a large Washington standing ovation to all our brave military around the world. They never let you down. Remain standing. Would every man and woman in this audience who wore the uniform of the United States of America please raise your right hand, keep it up, and let us applaud and give you the courtesy of our love and appreciation. We thank you, dear friends. We thank you, our military. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Yes. A moment ago, you saw a flag. Put that flag up again so everyone can see it. This flag, come right up front again if you would. This flag was one of the first flags, you're all aware, that the United States of America fought under. It defined our national character then with seven words. It said, fight 
or die. Don't tread on me.